Right, so hello everyone. Welcome to the last talk of, of the day, I think, before the keynotes start. Uh, I'm Justin Carter, this is Xu Gao. Yeah, I let, him I let him introduce me because he can say my Chinese name perfectly. I didn't know that. Xu <laughs> Gao. I just make some kind of noise and it seems to be the right thing, so. <laughs> anyway. We work for Stark and Wayne. Uh, we're a consulting company. We help uh, people be successful with um, Cloud Foundry. And a uh, very important, I don't, I think this one is working too. And uh, a very important uh, part of the Cloud Foundry experience, of course, is uh, service brokers. And as some of you may know, service brokers is also quite a strong pain point, or can be quite a strong pain point when it comes to deployment and lifecycle management. So over the years, helping our clients, we've had a few issues, you know, and today, t uh, now we're going to introduce a few small tools um, that offer solutions to some of the problems. One of these tools is uh, a, s a piece of software called CF Containers Broker, created originally by the Dr. Nick and Ferdy, uh, who are both members of the Stark and Wayne team and quite prominent in the in our community. Basically, CF Containers Brokers allows you to deploy anything as a service on Cloud Foundry via um, running Docker containers as services. So when a uh, service request comes in through the API to create an instance, what you'll get in the end is a Docker container. And this is nice because we get to use the uh, benefits of other communities, services that may be running in Docker containers today can, can be used in the um, Cloud Foundry ecosystem. And we don't need to know all the details of how to package the service up via Bosch, even though it's, we all love doing that, right? No, we don't. So um, CF Containers Brokers is a kind of a, a good way to go. Here's a, an example manifest um, that when we deploy CF Containers Broker, you kind of describe what the service and the plan is that you want to provide and what Docker container should come up when a uh, CF Containers Broker is asked to create a, a service. So um, in summary, we deploy the broker via Bosch, we register the broker with Cloud Foundry, and we get Docker images as a service. Great, super, right? So taking PostgreSQL in Docker as, a, as an example, you can uh, create service brokers, uh, service instances, and they will come up on the VM. But there is a problem. What is the problem? Well, you can create another instance and another instance, and eventually the VM starts filling up. You have a lot of containers running on a VM, and boom, you have no elasticity. So you basically get the full box of cats situation. <laughs> so this is one issue that we're dealing with. And we, uh, Dr. Nick, again, our founder, has hacked together, no, created a brilliant solution for this problem which is basically Subway. And the idea behind Subway is that it is a multiplexing service broker. It acts as a proxy and allows you to scale out um, your backend brokers. So you get into this kind of situation. So basically, you're deploying a number of service brokers that could be CF containers broker, but there are other examples of brokers that have this issue that they're constrained to one node and don't have the elasticity that's necessary for production workloads. And you put Subway in front of them and register Subway with the uh, cloud controller. So that way, when uh, cloud controller talks to Subway, it is able to you know, ap apply, uh, put the instance onto one of the number of resources that it uh, has available. Take a bit of breath, and let's have a look how this actually works. So CF create service, what is actually going to happen? is the cloud controller will talk to Subway. Subway will pick one of the backends and basically try to create a service on that backend. And this may or may not work. Uh, for example, if it turns out this happens to be one of the brokers that's already full, it might uh, decline to create the instance on this uh, particular VM. So Subway will just fail over and ask the next uh, VM, the next uh, backend, well, can you create it for me? And if this works, then the request will get passed back to Subway successfully, and that will get passed back to Cloud Controller. So 
the end user doesn't know or doesn't have to deal with this experience of a VM blowing up. It's transparent and the service will be created successfully. Um, something particularly interesting I find about this uh, subway proxying approach is that you have some, uh, a component in the middle that is being called with the exact same API that it calls out with. So the software is, is very thin because you don't ha need any translation of the, of the requests. All right, let's have a look at the bind service example. Basically, it works the same way. Uh, Cloud controller will ask Subway, give me a binding for a specific service. And Subway is completely stateless. So at this point, it doesn't really know what um, VM the service will be located on. So it'll go out and ask, hey, can you bind to this service, passing in the service ID? And maybe the answer will be, no, I can't, because I don't know about this service. So no problem. Subway asks the next one, can you bind the service? And once again, when the answer comes back successfully, the end user knows nothing about the failover that happened in the back end, and they get serviced. And after binding, you, the application gets credentials that talk straight to the back end and doesn't have to go through Subway. So there's no extra latency or something when the real connections are happening. And delete service, basically the same thing. I think you can understand. We ask, are you there? Can you do it? Yeah, this guy can do it, no problem. All right, so now we've talked a bit about Subway, how it works, what it's useful for, and I'll hand over to Xu Zhao to give a little demonstration on how to deploy it. Okay. Oh, this mic is still too high, you know, I wear high heels, so I'm going to do this. Um, before I continue, I have a simple question. Um, could you please raise your hand if you speak German? Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, you will know later why I ask the question. So, <laughs> yeah, um, um, I will share with you how to deploy the subway broker first, then I will give you a demo. So we, ha we provide two options to deploy the subway. First, I guess you're, you already can guess, or we can deploy it through Bosch because we can deploy, we deploy everything in the CF world with Bosch. I hope I pronounced Bosch correctly, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so use Bosch to deploy the uh, subway is very simple. I will share with you the uh, simple steps later. The second uh, option we provide, actually, you can push subway as an app. The, the reason behind it is very simple. We all know that CF is very good for running apps. So we kind of think of provided this, not we, actually it's Dr. Nick thinks it's nice to have this option. <laughs> so first, I'm going through how we use uh, Bosch to deploy it. Uh, certainly you will clone the repo from our GitHub, then you will configure your broker. After that, you can ma make manifest and deploy. After that, you can register it in a way which you register any other service brokers. So this is the uh, repo for CF Subway Bosch release. It's in uh, the GitHub open source. Cloud Foundry community is an um, account Doc Nick created. So basically we put lots of our good ideas project in this account. So if you go to Explorer, I promise you, you'll find something useful. So after you clone this, Configure your broker actually is very simple. You only have two things you need to configure. One is the backend broker. As Justin pointed out earlier, uh, if you recall the picture here, uh, let, let, okay, see, behind the subway you have uh, uh, several multiple backend brokers. So the configure here, you just need to specify the uh, URI or for the, for the backend broker. You do the user password, then either IP or URL. The second part is about the service broker itself. You need a port, you need listen on, you need a username and the password you need uh, to use when you register to CF. So this is very simple. After that, in the repo, actually there is a, a script 
called make manifest. So uh, when you run this script, it will automatically generate a manifest for you. Uh, Walden here is, I give this example because I deployed uh, on my local laptop in Bosch so that's why this is Walden. Uh, but certainly if you deploy it in, let's say, AWS or Whisper, you can specify the different parameter uh, generate manifest that way. The temp, my broker, is just the file uh, we configured earlier. So after that, you will have your manifest ready and the Bosch deployment will point to the manifest you just generated. You simply do a Bosch dash and deploy. There you go. So after the VM is running, you can register it, uh, use the CF create a service broker, uh, you give a name, let's call it subway broker, then you have the username and the password and the URL uh, you configured earlier. So uh, yeah, another way is push it as an app. The idea uh, is very simple, you, you push the app without starting it, then all the things we configured in the broker.yaml, uh, if we recall uh, how you configure backend brokers, how, how you configure the uh, secret and the password for your own subway broker, all those configurations in Bosch manifest, when you push it as an app, all those properties, actually you just set them as environment variables. Then you restage your app. Uh, after the app is running, you can register your subway broker from there. So the CBL repo, CF subway repo is located in the same account, the Cloud Foundry community. Uh, here, so basically here, I just set the app name to this, then I push it without start on purpose, because we need, when you see this step, you will know because we need to set a couple of environment variable for the app itself, for the broker URL, for the backend broker uh, URLs. After you set that, we start the app. After the uh, app is running, you can just register as you register any other service broker. Yeah, so these are the two ways how we can deploy Subway. After that, you may want to take a look how this works. So I'm going to give you a demo. Mm. Let me try this. Ich werde euch beibringen, Uber zu fahren. Yeah. Uh, see here. Uh, let me go to my terminal. Sorry. Because I need to bend a little bit. Uh, oh. Uh, so display. Uh, show your mirror. Is that? Uh, show your mirror option is one. Uh, no. Uh, arrangement. This. Okay. Ha. Ah. I know, it's tiny, I'm good. Yeah, I know that, thank you. Can you see the screen? Especially back there? Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I already have everything deployed on my machine to save some time. If I run Bosch, oh, I cannot type when people watching me. This is hard, actually. I need to do this. Is this perfect? Yes. So I deployed the CF subway here, as you can see. I also deployed the CF itself. Then this one is the Postgres Docker backends I deployed. Uh, let me show you. So for the CF sub subway, I only uh, deploy the one instance. You can deploy multiple if you want. Then for the back end, it's a four, four node. So then the basic idea will be this subway broker will sit in front of all these four service broker. This, these four services provide the, uh, 
what I did. Uh, this first service broker uh, is like provide the same service catalog. Okay. I actually already registered my service broker. Oh, what what I'm doing here? To the CF brokers. So if I show you, the, oh no, service service. We I see. Okay. So I ca I didn't call it Subway somehow. I called it Postgres Docker. But you, you can see, if I do this, this IP actually is from the subway broker. See the, here? So you know the broker we registered actually is this subway broker. Uh, what do we have in Marketplace? It provides three version of Postgres SQL service. I actually already created one service. I called it my. PG is an instance of Postgres SQL. So if we recall what Justin shared earlier, when we create a service instance, what happened in the backend? You can see from here. Uh, let me see. Oh, 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 oh. Eh, eh. Okay, good. Uh, so here is, <laughs> we know, uh, you see I deployed four backend brokers, right? This uh, four pin, P-A-N-E, it's just I, I push SH into the VMs, four of them for the Postgres broker. So you can see this is one of them, another one, third one, fourth one. So what I did here is I did a watch command. What I'm watching here is I run the Docker command, specify the host, then do the PS, so it will show me the containers I have on this node. As you can see in the first on the first node, I already have a container running. That is because uh, services, services, services. Okay. <laughs> That's why I should use control R instead of tap it. Uh, that the, the reason is I mentioned earlier I create a service here. Now I'm going to show you something cool here. Haha. <laughs> I like control. So if you read this comment, I'm going to create 20 service instance. Then we are going to see what happened in the backend. Yeah, I'm not typing so everything works. Here, you can see the container, it, it distributed on the four backends, right? So even we only have one subway broker. So let's go back to here. Okay, we finished uh, creating all the 20 instances. Oh, actually, this may be better. Okay, so you can see each of them get uh, uh, several instances here. Uh, let me go back to here. Uh, one more thing. So I, I'm not going to show you bind app because it will take a longer time. Uh, actually, I tried myself uh, if I do. Okay. I tried or not, actually, let me check. Oh, actually, nice. See, I already bind my PG to a simple app here, so the, it works the similar way. But for the all the new instance I created here, I'm going to directly demo you when we delete the service instance on what will happen. So now I'm going to do another magic here. Okay, so you can see we are deleting the service instance we just created. Then if you back here, you will see magic happening. All the containers is stopped from the backend. Only have this one left is I created six days ago. Okay, now if we run CF services again, only one left. So it's very actually, it doesn't have much delay, and all the service instance uh, re cre creation request is distributed to all the backend brokers. Uh, where is my slides? Hey, you guys can see, I cannot see on my screen. <laughs> yeah, but my, my laptop is, oh, okay, now it's working, okay. 
I'm going to do this here. Right, I'm good. So next, I want to suggest you guys try it out. Uh, it's again, it's on GitHub Cloud Foundry community. You can try both ways. Another thing I really want to share with you guys is, let's say you need to write your own service broker. Guess what? If you use Subway, you don't need to worry about how to scale out your brokers. You, you simply you just implement how your service broker works with your service, right? Then you just, like maybe 20 minutes, even 10 minutes, you deploy a Subway, configure it in front of your backend brokers. Done. It's so nice. Also, uh, Subway Broker is in production. We have, uh, we ha we have lots of clients uh, for StackWin, like uh, Intel, GE, Swisscom, all that. One of our clients, GE, they have a Predix platform. I don't know if you guys hear about it. Basically, they deploy the CF and all other things in multiple environments. So they had a problem. There are they have the PostgreSQL Docker deployed. They also have a uh, logger stash Docker deployed. But unfortunately, they only can deploy the one instance. So then the, the service instance number is limited on one host. So to, to solve this problem, uh, we use the subway uh, to, to scale out multiple brokers solve the uh, PostgreSQL Docker problem and the logger stash Docker uh, scaling problem. It's very nice. I think now it's still running in the production environment. Oh, actually, that's all I want to share. Uh, any questions? So when I want to use Subway, uh, is it enough to implement these official service program APIs? Do I have to No, I was explaining that before the original uh, the original service broker API is, is fine. So, the, sorry, the question was, do, does the back end need to support any additional endpoints other than the Cloud Foundry native API? And the answer is no. It has the same API on the back end and on Subway. Yeah, yeah. See, if I want to repeat here, you, what the you, only thing you need to do is you specify your back end brokers. Oh, we don't care what's your back end broker, right? Because you only need to specify your user password and URL here. Yeah, that's where it's amazing because you don't need to worry about that part. So um, that is a that has to do with what backend you're talking to. Subway doesn't really know about what the backends deal with, so. It does expect, though, that they all have the same catalog. Yeah. But if you have a backend like CF Containers Broker, there's no problem for you. Let's go back to the beginning. This example configuration, there's this, uh, this services um, key is an array. So you can specify multiple services. You could have a Redis broker, uh, sorry, a Redis container and a Postgres container and any other container that you like. As long as all backends mm -hmm. have the same catalog, it'll, it'll work. But I'm not sure that's a good. Uh, but I'm not sure that's a good idea to do that way. It, it's better like a one subway broker than the backend broker. Uh, same service catalog. Subway has no state. Yeah, it's stateless. Yeah, the, the backend brokers are just vanilla um, service brokers, as you would uh, implement them for any, for any other use case without using uh, Subway. So the backend service brokers need to keep the state of the bindings that they are created, just as, as normal. Subway is just a way to scale horizontally. Ooh. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the slides. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whoa, you have Wait. A so, yeah, so the binding that gets passed back from Subway uh -huh. is the binding to the backend broker directly. So the application doesn't get routed through Subway. It talks directly to the backend. Wait, what happened? Oh no, sorry. If you guys see any secrecy on my screen, close your eyes, reset your memory. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, where is my PowerPoint? Oh no. Maybe you closed it. No, I didn't. It's just this good. Oh, it's yeah, still on it's the screen. Yeah, it's on the screen, but uh, Hold on a I think it we just need. Here it is. Oh yeah. So <laughs> let's find the slide. Here, you get this situation. So the binding, oh, I skipped it. Here you go. So this is the situation after binding. Okay, the subway will ask the back end for a binding. When it says, yeah, you can bind it, the back end has to create that binding and subway will just pass it right back through to the end user. And at that point, the app will be bound directly to the back end. Uh, yeah, sure. It depends, again, on the back end. So Subway is, is completely, has no opinion. It supports the entire Cloud Foundry API. If the, the back end support it, then you can do it with Subway. Yeah. It would, it's just passing requests through. The, the endpoints that it implements are exactly the same that the endpoints it calls out to. There's absolutely no, no difference there. Yeah, I think a, a good way to understand the Subway is that you think Subway is just a simple, a little silly, stateless, proxy proxy between the real broker. So it didn't really do that much stuff. The next thing of this asynchronous uh, broker, when you do CFS service, it says, okay, you can do it multiple times. CFS service and do it again. And this sub way, if you do it, it will create it on one instance and then you will go to the another instance and create the same There, the, there is a validation in the cloud controller when you create service. If, you have, if you're giving the same name that, uh, than a service that already exists, cloud controller, I, I won't accept that create service. the back on the broker first, then, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yes? So, uh, how the uh, subway proxy works in terms of, like, uh, you regarding the URL, or you create a fresh HTTP call and put that body as it is? So, second one. Second one? Yeah. So, another question regarding the service schedule. Um, for example, all, all three backend, back, uh, backend nodes um, provides the same service. But yes. Is it possible that they provide different plans of the service? For example, one node runs on an eight CPU core machine and the other node runs on a four core CPU machine? No. Subway doesn't, doesn't support those kind of use cases. It really needs to be identical. Yeah. Or, I mean, you could do that, right? But it would be basically luck, which, which one you get, if you get it on the eight CPU core or the, or the other one. But when the one, one service catalog don't, uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't merge the service catalogs. It just looks at one and yeah. assumes that that's the same catalog for everything. Yeah, because the, the main purpose of Subway is really just scaling out the single node broker. So, yeah.
All right. <laughs> that means thank you. Thank you.